Hey everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? I hope you are ready for a hilarious stream of me bumbling around because five minutes ago I just spotted a bunch of problems going into tonight's stream. Um, the first one is that I opened up the GitHub page and I noticed that there's an X here um, and that my build is failing because of some unit test, and I'm not sure why. We'll look at that in a minute. But the other reason I started panicking out of embarrassment is because I tried to run the app, and it's not working. And the reason for that is because I'm a I didn't realize that it was September, and I forgot to renew my domain for the blog, <laughs> which I did just a few moments ago after realizing this. Um, but it obviously hasn't propagated out yet, so because the website doesn't exist, I can't, I can't run my app. <laughs> so that's fun. So we're, we're going to look at the first issue. We're going to see if we can figure out why the GitHub Actions workflow failed. And we're going to hope that by then we can view the blog and we can actually run and test the app. Um, if it doesn't work, maybe we'll learn about mock web server today, uh, and we can we can like throw in a mock response or something. Um, I mean, we have that capability. We did that early on in the app, so um, you know we're 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 just fumbling. I cannot believe I kept getting the emails because Namecheap warns you about a week ahead. Um, I don't know why I didn't just pay for like ten years or whatever the like longest span is for the domain, but uh, starting off, starting off great. Uh, so let's look at this test. So on Saturday, we finished, I can't even show you what we worked on because I can't run the app. So Saturday, what we worked on this week was um, being able to, now that you bookmarked articles, what was working last week or whenever we did it the first time was um, just looking at the bookmark icon. And it was storing the state inside that view model, so as long as the app was alive, really, we could save that bookmark state, but it didn't persist. So on Saturday, we added the room library, and we updated it so we store bookmarked articles inside of our database. Um, and yeah, so now like we could bookmark articles, we could force close the app, open it up, see them again. Uh, but not right now, unfortunately. Oh, oh, is it going to work? Hey, it's back up. Ah, I'm so glad that that happened quickly. Let's try here. Well, Chrome still can't view the website. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, but the XML feed is there. So this is what we worked on is I can click and select these, force close the app, open it back up. And I should still have my bookmarks. Um, cool. So that's that's catching everyone up. So let's look at. We are on the development branch. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm just gonna run the test command and see if I can figure out why this failed. Um, I'm wondering if it's something after merging code because um, I should not have merged the pull request if it wasn't working. So let's see what happens. So I'm gonna move the microphone a little bit. Let me know if the sound, uh, how the sound works out. I've been trying to figure out why some of the streams, a lot of people say the audio is good throughout, you know, pending the air conditioning, um, but that sometimes the video is jumpy. And I don't think it's our network because my roommate streams and he never has issues. So I think that I just have a laptop that's not really built for streaming. Um, so I'm thinking about it, maybe I can change up uh, something in my setup to make this work. Alright, so my local test passed. So I'm going to go actually back into GitHub, and I'm going to rerun, click on this rerun jobs button, and we'll see if the development branch is actually broken or if that was a flaky test. 
We'll see what happens. So, another reason I said I would be fumbling around today. Man, you won't work at all. Hmm. I'm surprised the app was able to pull the feed, but I can't view it in Chrome yet. Uh, the other reason I think I'll be fumbling around a lot today is because I haven't really thought through what I want to work on today. Um, someone gave a good idea of maybe doing like a, an article detail screen, which is something I thought of before, but rendering that content was a little tricky because of some things in the blog post, specifically like the code blocks. Um, and it could be a fun problem to work around. Um, we'll see though. Um, uh, in order for me to test that, I wish my website was working so I could view the RSS feed and actually understand what it looks like and see what I could do. So that's one option. I think there's some tech debt on the bookmarking feature I'd like to keep working on. Um, and or another thing I thought of is I've been wanting to show off the uh, a tool called Danger and adding that to the pull request here and showing how we can use Danger for um, some stuff. Maybe DNS, DNS cache needs to be cleared. Maybe. Um, I wonder if there's some weird cookies thing, like if I try incognito, will it work? Yes, it works in incognito. So maybe there's just like some cookies in the main thing. Isn't there a way to do like a, um, a force refresh? I th can't remember. Is it when you hold shift and reload or something? Force refresh Chrome. Hold the shift and click the reload. Windows and Linux. Ah, so in Chrome and Firefox, command shift press R. Okay, so let's try that. So we'll go here and we'll do command shift R. It still doesn't work. What the heck? Um, maybe I need to like close that Chrome window entirely. We could try that. Nope. All right. We're just, we're just fumbling. Um, but if I can open up an incognito window to see it, I'll use that if I need anything. Um, I'm just looking at the GitHub issues to see if there's anything. Um, search is probably another feature for another day, but really I want to go check that actions workflow and make sure that our CI is still passing. That's going to keep running. Um, does anyone in chat have something they want to see? Random, any topic or something for this app even? Or we could do something completely random. We could go off and dig into Jetpack Compose or something. Because that's the hot news this week. So I'm getting an illegal state exception, but it's only happening on, it's only happening, oops, sorry, let me move that over here, but it's only happening on CI, right? Um, stream fall guys? Yeah, I should figure out how to stream from my PS4, and maybe I'll do that sometime. Um, Let's dig into this. Android Essence Article Service Test 14 and 44. Um, so this is experimental. I'm not sure what illegal state exception I'm getting on GitHub Actions. I might have to just ignore that for now. Because it works, it works on my machine. We're just having a great day. Uh, 
So let me... What was that, um... What was the tech debt that I wanted to tackle from bookmarks? Oh, I remember. So one thing I considered changing, and maybe we can work on this today, is if we look at the repository class, we have this fetch articles method that returns like a data response of a list of articles. And one thing I didn't really like about this necessarily was that it was this one-shot request rather than returning a flow. And I didn't do that before because the data never changed, but now the data kind of changes because if we bookmark an article and then we store that bookmark, then I want this page to be notified of that and get, or I want the article list page to be notified of that and get an update. So I considered changing this to be a flow and then that means for the database class, wherever that is, article database, you know, instead of this just being a suspension function, this could return a flow. Um, so I think that would be a fun thing to work on today, especially because I don't know a lot about flow yet, so it would give me a chance to um, play around with that and maybe even, like, learn about some testing with flows and stuff. So um, if no one's dying to see something else. Maybe that's what we'll, we'll work on. So I'm going to go ahead to another branch. I'll still tie it with 30. Um, article flow. Okay, so where do I want to start? Um, well, let's just start here with article database because we're here. So we'll update this to return a flow of a list of persistable articles. So this interface was a like database interface that I made that's supposed to be like a wrapper around a room database implementation. So that if we ever wanted to swap out room for some other sort of like database library, um, like SQL to light, then this would be a little easier to change. So now let's go look at what changed there. So now this fun fetch bookmarks needs to change to return a flow. And then the room database article DAO needs to change as well. So let's go in there. We'll change this. I think that I know that room has flow support but I think I might have to add another dependency to make this happen. Um, let's get this compiling and then we'll talk about that. Um, let's just do that because I'm not really sure what I broke yet. We'll just run a clean build and see where the errors are, as I always do. Um, and then maybe what we can do where we do need this is do some sort of like iterative approach where maybe at first we just consume one event from the flow. Um, ah, I'll return that. Let's see. Um, okay, build failed because of this. So um, it's this bookmarks fetch. So we launched this async coroutine to fetch bookmarks. Um, so this is what needs to change. Um, I'm just thinking about how I want to handle this. Um, well, actually, let's let's even go a step further and change our the article repository. So we know, we can think about how this is going to update here. Um, oh, did the questions link? Yeah, so tonight's question link got updated um, because on that and someone asked the same question, couldn't you have article DAL return a flow rather than a list of flow? Did I type list of flow? I, I think I meant to say a flow of a list of items is what we want to do. Um, so that's what it does now. 
So every time the articles change, that's that whole list, or specifically the bookmarked ones, that's what will get emitted to our flow here. So we'll change that in the repository too, and then now we can look at um, Android Essence article service is what needs to be updated. So let's change the method header there. And one reason I hesitated is because um, what's happening inside this method now that I've sort of screwed up is we had two one-shot requests that were running asynchronously and then we were waiting for them both to finish, combining their results and moving on. But what I'm sort of doing now is like doing a one-shot network request and then getting a flow of information from the database. And it might be easier to make them both flows, and I think there's a way to like combine those, and that's what I'm going to Google, because I don't know the answer off the top of my head. So I'll say combine multiple flows, coroutine. Um, because I think there is like a combine operator, and it probably does what I am thinking of. Um, so, okay, so this is how combine works, which is what I want. Each time an emission from either one of the flows occurs, the combine operator takes the latest emission from two flows and provides the results in the lambda. Okay. So what I'm going to do, knowing this information, is we've changed our database to return a flow, but we're going to do the same with our retrofit API. And that is going to be this class. So instead of this suspension function for get feed, we're going to have this return a flow. And I think that this works out of the box from retrofit. Um, we will find out. Cool. So now we can look at this. Um, okay. So let's ignore all of this old code, actually, and um, rethink how this works. So we'll do the API feed flow. It's going to be API.get feed. Um, And actually, we want this to return the articles, right? So let's do this. So API articles flow. So it's going to be this flow, and then we're going to map it. And then we're going to do feed.items.map. And in essence, feed, uh, whoops, item to article dot or empty. Okay, so that flow ultimately going to map, and again, I'll just keep pushing this off screen. So we'll write one flow to get the networking stuff. Now we need a flow to get the articles from the database. And we can do that by doing um, bookmarks flow equals API dot, nope, fetch bookmarks. Um, and then do we map? We can map these as well. Um, I actually don't think we need to. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, so now return API flow dot combine. We're going to combine it with bookmarked articles flow. articles. I think this is the right ones. And so now we're going to look down here where we have this code to, you know, map and get the updated articles with the bookmarks. I'm going to copy this real quick and say, okay, so this is going to be API articles.map. 
And it'll also be bookmarked to articles to any. And then it's still yelling at me because I need to do data response dot success updated bookmarks. Cool, that's what I want. So let's run through this again. I did a lot of complicated code today, which I know I usually try to like slow down on stream. So let me let me back up everything that we changed here. So we've changed our retrofit API to give us a flow. Now, even though this is a flow, um, in practice, this should only ever because we make a request. It will update them, and it will return that flow from the repository. And then what we're going to do upstream is our view model now is going to change and collect from this flow. And say so every time this flow changes, we're going to go update the UI. But we can now get rid of this old code. We do still want to consider errors. So what we can do here is we can do on the flow, we could say dot catch. And then we can say, um, oh, I will have to do this again. Data response dot error of is this does this catch give me the error? It does. Um, but now this is going to yell at me because of type inference. It thinks that it's a flow of data response dot success. We'll do this. Whoops. We'll say. Response flow be flow data response list. We'll just throw in that type there. And now it's still gonna yell at me? Oh I know why. Ah Alright, let's let's deal with some code here. Okay. So now I don't have this type inference issue, but now I have a separate issue on error because it doesn't know the type. And this is a weird Kotlin issue that I had recently, and I don't entirely know why this works. Because we don't ever need it. I think we could put that on all of them. And then for error, we can actually change. I forgot how I did this. I know I just did this because for error we don't actually care about the type so we could just say nothing yeah that's what it was we make this an out now this doesn't yell at me anymore I can revisit that if someone wants me to later I don't actually know enough about <laughs> the generic types in Kotlin to understand why that fixes that but now I can just say data response dot error and it's able to do the like type inference that I want it to do so we've combined the flows. Can I actually return these now, or is this still going to then yell at me again? Nope, we can just return this. Cool. All right. So now the repository should be good to go. Um, we can try to run the app, but I think, nope, this will fail because now we'll need to update our view model. Inside our view model, we are acting as if we made the request, and then based on the value, we emit some state. So instead what we want to do, I'll leave this here for reference, instead what we want to do is do um, article repository dot fetch articles dot collect, and then do something with that response. And then actually we can just copy this code that we already had and do that when something emitted from our flow. And that will update the UI. That was a pretty quick change. So, and maybe I should rename this to fetch.
slow, to be clear, but I think that's fine for now. So what this collect does, if you're similar to RX Java, I guess it's comparable to subscribe. It will say I stop something from the flow. This will get called every time that flow wants to emit something. And it crashed. Nice. Let's see why. Not shall call adapter and let's Google it. The word flow should be in here somewhere. Does anyone know the answer to this? How to make retrofit return a flow? I made a um, coroutine call adapter factory, but I thought you didn't need it anymore. Maybe I'm not flow. Um, let's keep looking. Oh, I could do... I could use a flow builder, and that's probably what I'm supposed to do. Um, I wonder if Mohit is lurking, and maybe he would know the answer to that. Um, so it looks like what they do, so their API service is still just a suspension function, and then they use like this flow builder to get the item and then emit it. And they even have this flow on, which I'll probably want to use something like that too. Um, or they do this, and then they call as flow. Can I do that? I don't know what that as flow is called on. Um, let's consider doing something like that. Um, so let's go back to the API class. So we know we can't do this. So let's change this back to a suspend fun. Um, and let's go back in here. Um, and let's try to do what they did. So they do return flow, emit. Okay. So let's try that. Just comment this out so I can reference it. Return flow. Um, why is this yelling at me? Am I not allowed to do this? Oh, I don't want return. Okay, maybe this will work. So we'll create the flow ourselves using just this flow lambda. Tell it to emit whatever it gets from the feed, and then we're going to map that. I could actually put this inside of here. Maybe I want to do that. Um, um, API, whoops. API dot get feed items, and then emit articles. And then we don't have to map anything. We just have that right inside when the request is made. Create a flow, 
fetch the articles, emit the articles. Let's try and run this and see if that passes. Great, thank you for uh, the anonymous questions answering these. Um, cool, so retrofit does not support returning flow in the service. There is an adapter, um, or we could use a flow builder like we just came up with. Um, cool, so that worked. What I actually wanted to see um, is because there's these two different flows and the database one is really quick. Also, let me just clear out these questions now that I've answered them. Um, because the database one should be really quick, we might actually see something where the database articles show up first. Oh no, they didn't. They all came out together. Interesting. Um, I was kind of curious if the three bookmarked articles were going to show up first because that call finished first. But it's actually possible, and you know what I bet what is happening is that um, this combine, while it takes the latest from each flow, I would bet that it's waiting for at least one item from each flow, if that makes sense. Um, so let me commit this code real quick now that we know it works. So um, using a flow of articles. So, and then the other thing that I wanted to see with this before I go down that thought process about the combine operator is now when I, I should be getting another emission from the flow. And how do I want to test that? I can test that in, where's my view model? Nope. Article list view model. So I'm just going to put a bookmark right here. And when I toggle one of these, it gets hit. OK. So I can see that I do get an update every time. So now we can talk about the other portion of tech debt that I've created now in <laughs> solving this, where we get a flow of articles that are either the network or the database. But actually, um, right here, when a bookmark is clicked, we update the bookmark by toggling the bookmarked field. We persist the article in our repository. And then this thing that I said we can do this, change this now, is we were previously updating our local state and then emitting that. So now when I bookmark an article once, my state's getting updated a whole bunch of times. We don't want to do that anymore. So in fact, let's take that out. And let's run this, and let's make sure I can still bookmark something. Cool. So I know it seems laggy. We talked about that before. And maybe this one's a little laggier because of the round trip that everything has to make. Um, but it could also be the emulator. But maybe we can look at a way. So now we are waiting for this full round trip to happen, is when I click this, I go back to the view model, I say persist this new article where it's bookmarked or not, and then it stores it in the database, the database gets an update, that posts to my flow, that gets sent back to the recycler view. So there is like a whole IO operation that happens there when really we should also like update the state locally so we can see the UI update really fast. But I think it's pretty quick, so I'm going to leave that out for now. But you were here, you all know that, you know that that's a thing that's happening. So let's commit that code, um, removing local state update. And now we're going to have to deal with the fact that none of our tests So let's run those, and let's see which ones are failing and why. So we have this fake article database that is no longer the right method name. So let's 
Let's just remove that real quick. Do fetch bookmarks. So it's a flow of persistable articles. Instead of just return mocked bookmarks like we did before, we can do return flow of mocked bookmarks. So that's another um, flow builder that we can use. Get that, get that running. Let's try and run a test again. Awesome. Fetch articles, same thing. So, ooh, this is a little different, actually. Um, because, let's talk about this. So we had this, um, ah, we can remove that now. No, undo whatever I just did. Uh, so we have this fetched articles call, and we used this idea of a suspend coroutine because we wanted to have control over when articles were emitted. Um, and if you're doing a regular suspension function with a one-off request, this would be the way to do it, is you keep track of something called a continuation when you create your coroutine or when you're sus calling your suspension function you can create a suspend coroutine and track that continuation. And then when you're ready to emit something, you call your continuation.resume. This works a little differently with the flow, because a flow, at least I don't think I can do it this way, I can't, like, with some continuation. But something that I have control over that can back a flow is a channel. So we could create a channel, and then let's let's do that. Let's let's just talk through this whole thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna comment this out so I can reference with the uh, compiler right now. So I can create this private um, article list channel. It will be a channel of that long type data response list article. We'll just make it a channel. I might need a special kind of channel here, but let me go through this and see the error. So I still don't know flows and channels great, so I'm excited to like talk through my thought process out loud um, and work through that with all of you. So now, when fetch articles is called, well, one thing I want is it's only called a certain number of times, but then we can do return article list channel dot consume as flow. So now that backing channel that my fake article repository that this class is turn is still backed by this channel that we have control over. And the reason we want that down here when we tell it to finally emit stuff is when we can do article list channel dot send and we can send that response. Um, and this needs to be a suspension function if I want to suspend or send to a channel. Same line here. Make this a suspend. Cool. Um, this is going to fail, probably, um, because the tests aren't... yeah. So. These robot methods that call that, these need to be made into suspension functions now. This is just keeping up with all the changes I've made. Another one. Um, okay, so because this calls a suspension function, we'll make this run blocking test. To do that for a few of these. Do that real quick. Run blocking test is a method from everything inside the test, I believe, with the global scope, but it will do some additional things for you, like make sure all of your coroutines actually finish and things like that. Um, there was a, um, a question, I actually closed this in the Slido link, um, that clarified a question I answered earlier. Um, when I mentioned how like the database returns a flow of a list of articles, 
And the question was, could it just return like a flow of articles? Um, and maybe, but I don't think that it should or that I would want that because I don't really want to process like each article individually. I want to process like these are all of the bookmark articles from my API. Um, maybe if I was doing some more complex processing or specific processing on each article, maybe I'd rather have them come in one at a time versus as a whole list. But I think for this use case, I want a whole list of articles. Cool. Three tests failed. And we've got some class cast exceptions. So let's look at one of them first. Let's look at um, fetch articles with one bookmarked. And let's debug this and figure out where the cast exception is happening. It's probably We'll see. We were getting the response from fetched articles, we were getting the actual articles, and then asserting them. Because this no longer returns response, this is a flow. So we actually want to collect the flow here. Now, there is something we can look at shortly, which is a library from called Turbine, which is used for unit testing flows, and we probably want to use that here. I think, and I could be very wrong, but I think right now I could just do something like this. I could do service.fetcharticles.collect and the response. And then I can do my assert right there. And so let's let's run that same test and let's see if this passes. And then we'll go do this to the other other spots that use it. Flows are fun. <laughs> it's like very new to me, but I think it's interesting. And I like working with them once I understand them. I think if I understand them more and I make flows a part of the process from the beginning and I don't have to take all these one-time requests and like they're a lot nicer if I'm beginning. Um, but this is lumped in the other bucket of things I like to like this is a real world process of taking an old architecture and seeing the pain points of it and doing the hard work to replace it with something else. I will say this, for those of you who are watching closely, there was one really magical thing that just happened in the updates I realized. Um, and I'm totally going to toot my own horn at this. Um, okay, almost magical, is that I changed the way my repository layer works, right? But if we look specifically at, like, what changed inside like here, inside like fake article repository, is I changed the thing to be backed by a channel, but then this emit articles and emit failure method, I had to change those to then send to the channel, but notice that those method signatures, they didn't change at all. So when I look at where that's referenced, which is in like the robot, change here to make these suspension functions, and then I had to then, inside the tests, change them to be run blocking tests. Big chunk of my test that's actually validating my code was unchanged. Like, all those tests... articles, assert view state. Click bookmark, assert view state, assert article is persisted. Like, that behavior never changed. And so my test didn't have to change at all either. We were able to use these testing robots to create that very clear abstraction between my test code and operating with the components under test 
um, that made this like really smooth process for us. Can you imagine if we didn't have a test robot and every single one of these tests how to emit articles from a flow? Like we would have to update five different four or five different methods here. Not to mention the different files that use this, but that architecture we used in our tests like saved us so much time right now. Um, and maybe you didn't see that, but like so hopefully that pointing it out is is interesting and that sells you on testing robots even more if I haven't done that before. Um, because I think when we built them, I told you like it's an upfront cost and it feels like you're writing twice the amount of necessary code for your tests. But when you inevitably change something like we just did, um, it's so nice to like have that time back. Um, so let's look at article SV model. That hey, that's this test. So let's run this and see why this one. Um, looks like we had some comparison error here. Um, oh, and I have an interesting question I'll look at in a second. Interesting. Okay, let's look at this. This looks like a logic thing that I broke. Um, so it's expecting articles, and I like that the truth library from Google breaks it down. So it was expected that we would see bookmarked equals true, but was bookmarked equals false. I'm so we will have to make a slight change to this test. So let's talk about what this test is doing really quick and see why this broke. So let me clarify. So this is expecting that the article in the list says bookmarked equals true, but it was bookmarked equals false. So let's talk about what this test is doing. We're creating our view model, then we're telling it to emit some articles. We're asserting the view state is success with those articles. We're clicking bookmark, and then we're asserting that it's success with the updated articles, and then asserting that an article was persisted. Now the reason was because I removed my code where we were locally updating the state. So this test class right here is, it's running in isolation. It's not like a full integrated test. So what we think the app does, which is when we persist an article, it's stored in a database. We get a database update and the view model what this test is doing because it's not testing that all of these components work together. Um, and it's also not updating its state locally anymore. So I bet if I were to remove this, if all I wanted to do was click a bookmark and assert that, whoops, I tried to comment you out. If all I want to do is click a bookmark and assert that it was persisted, this will probably pass. Um, but it's not going to see that update because nothing actually happened behind the scenes to make it update. And so we can, there we go, that, I'll hydrate for you, Mocker. So that's why this view state didn't work. So we could... If we wanted to track that, um, oh god, command Z. If we wanted to track that, what we could do is move this here and basically say when we click a bookmark, assert we persist it. But if we want to verify that our UI can update, what we can do then is just say emit articles, updated articles, and then assert view state again. And I mean, this is actually. This is pointless because this has already been tested that when I emit some articles, we assert a view state. So I'm going to change the functionality of this test to remove that. And then all we're going to change this to is say, um, we're going to change this test name to really what we're doing is say, clicking bookmark should persist article. And then we can get rid of this because we're not actually referencing it anymore. So this is what our test is really doing, just asserting that when we call this method, this thing happens. So let's go ahead and run that test. Um, 
and then I'll look at, I know there's one question on Slido I will look at once I finish this thought process. Awesome. Build successful. So we will just say fixing all of my broken tests. So the comment was on the flow test that I made somewhere. I think this guy, yep. So where we um, collect from a flow and then assert, it they said that there was a single method on the flow. Ah, so single, let's look at the docs for this. Um, Terminal operator that awaits for one and only one value to be published. Um, and it throws for an empty flow or for flow that contains more than one element. I wonder if that will work here. Um, because of the fact that while I'm only expecting one, is it possible that this could return? Let's try this and see if it works. So we'll just say um, response is equal to this. And then we'll cut this out and drop this here. So we'll do the flow.single. We'll get the actual articles and assert that they're the same. Let's see if this passes. Um, gotta go for stand up. Yeah, have a good time. Sorry I started late today. Um, I'm recording this one, it'll be up on YouTube. I accidentally forgot to record part of Saturdays. It's on Twitch, but it will not end up on YouTube. <laughs> I'm just having a week, forgetting to do stuff. Uh, but thank you for stopping by. Cool, so that passed. Um, thanks for the suggestion. I kind of like this a little better, actually. This test reads a little nicer this way. Couldn't you download it? Probably. Um, someone has probably made like a Twitch video downloader Chrome extension or something. Or maybe I can just inspect. We'll see. Or I... Uh, I know someone who's at Twitch, but, but it's their birthday today, so I can't bother them today. Woohoo, it passed. Yeah, I think I'll commit this. I think this is a little more readable, actually. But it will be fun when we have more flows in the app to look at the Turbine library from Cash App. Um, single. Um, which I can actually show you all in a second, uh, just to talk about. What it works. No, don't bo don't bother them on their birthday mocker. And let's now that we know like our tests are passing, let's just manually run run and test the app real quick. Um, cool. Yeah, my damn emulator's definitely slow because that's running a little slower to go all the way around, but um, something that can be improved for sure. Um, let's actually look at that uh, local state to see if we can make this faster. So inside our article adapter, we have this view model. And then when it's on clicked, we call this on bookmarked clicked. But what do we want to do here? Um, sorry, just thinking. Um, I think I'll leave this alone for now. And then we can come back to this to make this. Yeah, because see, it looks fast now. So I think this is actually, even though we know there's that whole disk writing round trip between when I click on this button and when the recycle view actually updates. Um, it happens pretty fast, so I think I'll just leave it for now rather than over-optimize. So let's go ahead and get that pull request going. Um, and we'll talk about this. So converting article requests to flows.
and hopefully this will continue to pass on GitHub Actions. Um, yeah, it looks like it is passing. That's good. So I don't know why it was not passing on the development branch. We'll have to see if that keeps happening. So Turbine, just because I keep talking about it, um, is this really cool testing framework for testing flows. I will drop it in chat. Um, but it does something similar to what we did with the flow.collect. But you can basically get a flow called dot test, and then you can assert on each item and say expect complete when you expect the flow to be done. Or if you don't care, like there is like a um, cancel and ignore remaining events if you just want to make sure one specific thing was emitted. Um, but it looks it looks really interesting. And so yeah, so it'll check here like if you only expect one item but you don't expect to complete, it will error. So it makes sure you handle lifecycle is the wrong word, but basically every event of that flow from when it starts to when it's done. Um, cool. So that was that was a fun little piece of tech debt to clean up um, for not being prepared on the stream at all. Let's see if I can I can view the website now. Nice, my blog is back up. Clearly no one uses it because no one told me for two days that I had forgotten to renew the domain. Feels bad, but... <laughs> um. Oh, good question in here, which is, um, do I close the channel that I had in the fake repository? And I do not, but I should. I know that that is, like, probably something that should happen. So, um, I'm surprised that it didn't yell at me for not closing it. Um, but what we could do, we could just make a public method on here to close it. Man, what, what, what the heck, let's do that real quick. Um, so we'll just create one called close channels. Just in case I ever add another one, we'll do um, article list channel dot close. Because um, even though it's only for unit tests, we don't really want to leave this reference hanging around. So we'll create that. Um, we will need to use this wherever this is used, which is in this robot. Um, robot has to do after the test is done. And then smart about this and we can use the after keyword to set something that's going to run after every But then we could just say test robot dot cleanup. So after every test, we're gonna have our test robot clean things up so we don't even have to worry about it. Let's run that test, make sure they all still pass. Nice. Cleaning up channel from flow. Thank you to the person who called that out. Also, I hope that that was the right solution uh, that you were thinking of. Um, Really appreciate the questions, as always. It is so nice when people engage with the stream. It helps me out a lot. It makes me feel way more comfortable after a while. I'm always nervous when I start, and then once y'all talk to me, I calm down immediately. <laughs> so let's see. That passed. Now I'll just wait for this commit to pass. And maybe when it does, I know I only streamed for about an hour tonight, but um, I think that that's how late I'm going to stream tonight. I might be able to do another one this weekend. So, any uh, thoughts or questions? I know 
Oh, thank you, Anthony. I don't know if the tech debt streams are as fun as like actually working on a feature. Um, so next time, maybe if I want to get away from the Kotlin coding, we'll look at danger. Um, if I haven't shown that to y'all before, it's like a thing you can add to GitHub pull requests that will like check things about your pull request and comment on them for you so it can like check if you did and say like labels are required or if your pull request is over a certain number of lines it will comment and warn you about that. Um, I actually use it for uh, something to check like um, outdated um, Gradle dependencies. So like if we look at, um, does this one have it? This one doesn't have it. Um, this pull request, which is probably not working. Um, ah, dang it. But sometimes I have a thing where right here it will comment and it will tell me like all of my app's dependencies that have updates. So I don't have to check it manually. Basically on every pull request, it's going to check for me and say like, hey, constraint layout is up to 2.0 now. And then I can just update from there. So, yeah, I'm just going to hang out and casually chat while I wait for this build to finish. Um, and then I'll probably walk away from my computer for a minute, but I know that I need to update the readme because I never finished um, with last week's things. Can't believe we're on stream number 11. Hitting I did not expect this to be as well received. Um, as it has been when I started this uh, over a month ago. Not the prettiest app, but we can change something about it soon. Everything goes slow when I'm trying to fill the dead air. Maybe we can look at um, Jetpack Compose soon, too. I played around with it a little bit. I don't hate it as much as I used to, but I still kind of hate it. Which is how I feel about Hilt. <laughs> Alright, this I will... Y'all can trust me to let this pass, and then I'll, I'll update the readme later tonight, so... Um, you know, check out the repository, star it if you haven't, you'll be able to see all the resources we talked about, but thanks everyone for coming tonight, I really appreciate it.